Hello, everybody, and welcome to our uh, next in a series of artist talks. Today, we're talking with Judith Zugish, who is showing in our July 2021 exhibition at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts that we're calling Over, Under, and Through. Um, it's work by three artists. Judith uh, weaves with nature and um, uses willow skeins and books in her work and grows the materials that she uses in her work. My name is Deborah Rosinski. I'm the executive director of Bainbridge Arts and Crafts, and it's, it's my honor to be talking to Judy today about her work. So I'll, I'll let her describe a bit about her international travels and background and how she got started working with natural fibers and growing natural fibers that she and her partner use from a garden they've been growing for the past 30 years. Is that right? <laughs> At least. Really <laughs> wonderful and amazing. Um, and you use this in teaching as well as making your work. Uh, I'll let you dive in and, and tell us about that background and how you got started and where it's taken you. Well, great. Thank, thanks, Deborah. And I've got to say it, it feels so good to be um, engaged again artistically. I think I can um, speak for every artist probably out there as well as so many of the art community that um, this breakout moment feels very, very good. So thank you for helping me really be in one of my breakout moments in the studio too. It's been great. So um, I'm thinking that uh, in terms of background, you know, it's been almost 40 years. So it could take me because I can be a talker four years to tell you, but I'll try not to do that. <laughs> um, so it all kind of began uh, very serendipitously for me. Um, we moved on to a piece of property in Marysville. Um, at the time, I had a really tiny youngster. And in March of that particular year, I took that youngster out on my back in a backpack and went out to enjoy a garden and begin the many jobs that I knew it was going to become. And so I had my pruners with me and I cut some branches that I thought were going to the compost. And at the feet of this big magnolia was also quack grass. And quack grass has a tendency to run, 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 run. So I had three foot long pieces of quack grass branches and all of a sudden an inspiration to do something more than put them in the compost. I just found myself like, pulling knots and making circles and linking things. And the next thing I know, I have this just ethereal form. And it's got this beautiful curve to what the branches want to do. And there's power between the pieces. And I'm pushing and pulling and enjoying it. And so I take my son off my back. I dig a little hole in the sand pit that is right near my feet. I set him in there because he can't walk yet and I crouch on the edge of that spot and just start manipulating. No formal background at all in that. And that's where it began. So to this day, which is now, my son has grown quite a lot. Um, so it's 40 years <laughs> since that day. Um, my inspiration and my connection and every aspect of what has led me through uh, my journey with basketry has been from the garden into my hands, into the studio, out to the place where I share that knowledge and teach or travel or hunker in. Um, they're all the fabric of this garden in my hands. You wanted to talk more about the skeining process and how you go about that, how you prepare, um, maybe even describe the plants that you grow and how you use them in the work that you're doing. I'm really glad to get a chance to talk a little bit about this process because um, truly the exhibit pieces that you have, that's at the heart of every single piece um, in this exhibit. So. You know, as we talked about here in the garden at Fish Sticks, um, we grow all our own willows and I use them in many different ways. So starting from the beginning, um, 
you're, you're growing a product that you can use at many different levels. So for instance, with this little piece, you can see how the bark is still on it. And that's one year old rod willow that has uh, the color still left on it. And you have a panel in the exhibit that exhibits uh, that bark on. So that's what classical willow work is usually done with. And then when I grow the willow, I'm also extracting some different materials from it. So in the exhibit, you have two of my very large pieces that are made with bark. Now the bark extraction comes from growing willow for three to five years. And then that particular patch, I'm growing with the idea that I'm going to cut it and peel it and roll it like what I just showed you. And then it's gonna go through a drying process and that'll last for about a year and then it'll be soaked and I'll start to hand cut it into strips. Um, the strips can be made into everything from large baskets to small baskets. So there's that character in that bark that I particularly like to extract. And then we get to what you have, which is really an exciting exhibit of the skein willow. Typically, I don't send those pieces out because without this information, people don't know what they're looking at necessarily. And they look like they're terribly fragile. But what I have done in a classical German kind of technique is extract the fine center or the heart, if you will, of that willow. So it's a long process. And in the process, you become very connected to each of your pieces. So what happens um, early on is that when I'm cutting that willow that is going to have some bark on, that gets bundled and set aside. But the most choice pieces of the best varieties are eight feet tall, kind of like the willow that you see behind me here. And they go through a process where you're uh, standing them in a bucket uh, for about three to four months, each time checking to see whether or not they will peel. And that happens at bud break time. So when they're ready to peel, everything else stops. You don't cook anymore. You barely shower. You just get out there and start peeling. And so you're taking that outer coat off of one-year-old rod willow, choice willows that are then white, and then you're um, drying each of them. But first you want to wash them so the tannins don't show on that white rod because white is choice. So once I've got them peeled and I've got them washed, then they stand like what you saw behind me here in the studio for about a year's time to go through a curing process. And at that point, and I think I sent you some pictures, it is a process where you're taking that original rod and you're splitting it with a cleave into three equal pie wedges. And each of them have like a point on them. Now they go through a planer blade and that thins it a little bit. And then they go through a sizing tool and that narrows it a little bit. And then you do that again and again, and again, and again. One time I counted before I started my basket, how many times I handled each strand, and it was 22 times. <laughs> so by then you really have a piece that you are connected to. And so for me, unlike the traditional work, which is fabulous and fascinating and beautiful, I start to get the character of that material into my hands and I start to envision something I wanna to try to do because I have this slender, tender, but strong heart of the willow in my hands. And I like to work open as many of the pieces in the exhibit are. I like the sense of that air inside pushing to the outside and the two integrated pieces. So when I start a piece, it may take me months to complete it but somewhere in that process becomes that narrative that we have talked about before. And, and the character of the piece takes on an individual kind of presence. Um, you have to get up and down from the bench uh, as you go, because unlike many things where you might prepare a whole mess of material and then start weaving, in order for it to fit perfectly, slide into place, 
do what you want it to do, you may have to go shave just a tiny bit more off, or you might have to narrow it just a little bit. And um, so you're always connected to this material as its own essence at the same time that you're starting to create or build another story within that willow. And so that's what engages me in it. And um, I've been doing it a long time and I just find every time I put my hands to it, something else occurs, which is very exciting as an artist. Can we also talk about um, growing the willow in the garden, um, steps you take to grow it the way that you want? And Yeah, so the willow, um, most of the varieties that I grow, they have different purposes. Uh, sometimes it's for the color. Most of them are origins of European willows in the Alba species that have a nice hard center to them. And in order to um, grow sort of a plantation of willow, and it's, it's a pretty darn generous plant uh, in the sense that it's one of the few things that if you plant um, a number of uh, individual rooted plants side by side, they are going to grow not like a tree or bush, but they are going to grow where you're cutting the center off of them and they get multiple strands. I think there's a picture I gave you that has some of that example too. And so that's called coppicing. So in order to grow a particularly good crop for me, I have it in two different places in the full sun. I have it on um, a weed mat barrier that you can plant through because you want to keep the competition from weeds down. And they like full sun and good water and regular cultivated care. They really are a harvest. And so each year you're going to go in in January and cut that all the way down to the ground because there's going to be multiple rods, single rods that are going to sprout from that uh, coppiced crown. Um, in the case of the bark, as I was telling you, I let some of it go for three to five years, but that means we've got other small ones that are coming along at the same time. Uh, so I'm just harvesting out the larger ones that have a size like a, We've got some back here, sort of a staff. So I use them many times for my walking sticks. And that peeling takes place. And meanwhile, you're trying to nourish the rest of the plant so that they come on and do the same. Because the thickness of the bark, it also depends on the size of the original staff that you're peeling. Um, and it'll last for years and years and years. I mean, I have one patch that's over 25 years old and um, it surrounds that labyrinth that I really like because it moves in the wind. And the other patch I started about six years ago, which has individual varieties that I want to harvest either for their color and save them or harvest them for the skeining willow. So it, it grows fabulous in the Northwest. There's a photo that you sent us of uh your piece called Daughter on the Mountain, and you're holding the piece in front of your face. And there's something about that that's really compelling. Was there a thought in your mind when you did that? Um, we were getting some pictures and things because I was um, asked to submit for that international Louis um, uh, competition um, that is quite prestigious. So one of the things that they, require is that you have a scale photo so that was the huh. principal reason <laughs> now we're trying to get the scale photo and i start goofing around and it's like this belongs in front of my face this is how it ought to be so <laughs> and, and the black and white in that is a really curious thing about that particular piece and um i typically because i love the pure ivory of the skeins do not want to color them but this piece had so much going on with the movement the tai chi movement of daughter on the mountaintop and then it was a real compellingly challenge uh to myself with technique so it has a lot of very intricate german techniques in it as well as my own um developed style that looks free but uh, typically has to be handled in such a way that it can look free and still be very, very strong. 
Um, and I really played a lot with the shape and stuff in that one. So it's, it's, it's one of my better, uh, most recent pieces that I'm proudest of. So yeah, thanks. We're so grateful to you for taking the time to talk to us here at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts and to show your work with us and to make all this wonderful new work just for the show. We're very excited about that. So Judith, thank you. You're, you're most welcome. I'm, I'm honored to be a part of it. I can't wait to see, see the exhibition in person and I hope everybody um, really gets a chance to enjoy it as well. Be sure not to miss Over, Under and Through, three artists, three perspectives, featuring artists Erin Haldane, Susan E. Walker and Judith Zugish at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts from July 2nd through August 1st.